Welcome to the Unaffiliated Creatives Podcast, a show where independent artists can learn from other independent artists. My name is K.A. Everyday, and each week I will be speaking with some of the most creative minds in the indie music space, trying to figure out what they have learned while navigating through the music industry without the support of major record labels. This podcast is brought to you by the good people over at King Neppy Studios and powered by Red Weasel Media. Thanks for tuning in to the Unaffiliated Creators Podcast. I'm your host, K.A. Everyday. This is the end of y'all, the safe place. So take off your shoes, get comfortable, and stay a while. If you have any feedback for us, please email us at unaffiliatedcreatives at gmail.com. The snippet you heard playing was a song titled Charger by Indie Artist Sax Star J. Now that everybody has taken off their shoes and gotten comfortable, Sax Star J, what you been up to? What's going on, guys? Pleasure for having me. All right, I just, all right. I'm saying we got a couple of things in the works right now. I've been doing a couple of shows in the studio consistently. So, you know, we're working. All right. So can you explain to the audience how you came up with your stage name? Sack Star J. It's crazy because in the process of coming up with my name, I was just throwing out a bunch of random ideas. I was thinking about keeping my real name, J.C. Young, for those of you who don't know. But um, my homeboy Pounds in Houston, shout out to him. He came up with the name. I don't know exactly where he got it from. He's just like, you know, I, th- I think that fits your persona. You know, you you like money. You know, you got swag. And, you know, you always feel like you're number one. So you just put Sag Star and then J stands for Jace. And the rest is history. All right. So I got to explain this to the audience because they might not know exactly what you're talking about. So what he's talking about when he made the reference to the money in his stage name, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's yeah. not an S, wherever the S would be in his stage name, they replaced the S with a dollar sign. So that's what he meant right. with the money reference. And also, not only that cash tags, but it's a sack. So like, you know, the sack of money, then a star, you know, stars is at the top. That's what you look at when you look in the sky. So everywhere your stage name is displayed, it, it actually shows like the, the, the money sign bag. Yeah, it's like on Apple Music, Spotify, you definitely have to type in the cash tag or it's like you're going to have a hard time looking me up for sure. So definitely add the cash tag, the most important part. Hey, that's crazy, man. But I, that's cool. I like that, man. Um, so what are some other things that you enjoy doing besides making music? Mm, when I'm not making music, I definitely love to, you know, go outside. I love to travel. You know, I like to hop on the game every now and then, connect with my folks. And, you know, I just like to, oh, yeah, I'm definitely a chef. You know what I'm saying? I like to get down in the kitchen. I definitely, um, I like to do that for sure. But other than that, you know, I'm spending time with family and I'm just catching a vibe wherever I can. All right. So uh, what other talent do you have that are not related to music? Hold on, repeat that. I said, uh, what other talents do you have that are not related to music? Uh, talents? Okay. Um, I used to run track, for those of you who don't know. I ran that through um, high school. I played football. And I was actually pretty good before I tore my meniscus. So, you know, I'm a little athletic. I've been in the gym every now and then. But uh, besides that, it's nothing really. You know, I play sports, make music. That's pretty much it. Oh, so you an athlete, huh? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, and I guess you must be pretty fast too. Talking about you ran track. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We did all the relays, four by one, four by two. What well, the main relays? I ain't gonna say the others aren't as important, but you know those were the highlights of the show. You know what I'm saying? But um, definitely ran the uh, hundred meter dash as well. Did a little triple jump. That's what messed my knee up in the first place. He coach messed me up. With that. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, coach. You know, messing with yeah. man's knee up. Yeah, we here now though. So hey, hey, things happen for a reason, right? right? All right. So, so growing up in, in Newark, New Jersey, uh, did you listen to other rappers from Jersey? Uh, at that point, no. Because honestly, growing up in Jersey, I left around when I was like eleven. So, like in two thousand eleven, going into two thousand twelve, I moved to Houston. So basically, 
my style, a little bit of what you hear in my music is really versatile. So that's kind of, I guess you could say, growing up in Houston, listening to a bunch of varieties of music, you know, like Travis, Bun B, you know, just a bunch of Houston artists. They real versatile over there. So I got to meet up with a few of them while I was out there the past couple of years. And it's been dope. Like, I just been enhancing my, you know, my whole persona and vibe and flow. So it's definitely going to be dope. All right, so I wasn't even prepared to ask you this because I didn't even know that you was going you was going to share or talk about your whole Houston experience. But and mm-hmm. maybe I'm a little old, so you might not even remember this time in Houston. But were you ever a big fan of the chop and screw music down there? I was actually. I remember when Drake dropped that uh, chop and screw song for DJ Screw. That was pretty hot down there for sure. Yeah. That was cool. Definitely a vibe out there. Not everybody, you know, may know what it is or mess with it like that, but it's definitely something different. It's unique. All right, let me ask you this question. Uh, Which one do you enjoy doing more and why? Recording the song or performing the song? Mm, you know me, I'm, I, I'm, it's all about the process for me. But I, I enjoy making it just as much as I do performing it because when I, you know, in the studio, I get to, I feel like I'm an orchestrator, you know what I'm saying? I'm directing this. I want this. I like that. And turn this up a little bit here. I, I just, that's fun to me, you know what I'm saying? It's real, like, it's my medicine to me, you know? It's like a little, I don't know, it's dope. I like the whole product of creating something. It's like a baby, you know what I'm saying? You know, we as men, you know, we don't have that, you know, thing of, you know, delivering babies or whatnot. So for me, <laughs> making music, that's my little, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, making music is your baby, huh? Yeah, definitely right. dope. I love the process. And then when just when it comes out, it's fire. It, when you was making it, it makes the performance even better. All right. So I've never asked the artist this question that I'm about to ask you. So I hope it actually comes out right and it actually right. makes sense. So if yeah. you could perform at any music venue slash concert, past or present, which one would you choose and why? And what I mean, venues, I'm talking about stuff like Woodstock back in the day, you know, Coachella, stuff like that, like big music venues out of all the ones that you could think of. Which one would you love to perform at and why? Hmm. Well, one that's on my list right now, you know, my little bucket list is definitely rolling loud because, you know, I think that has a, that's a big impact on hip hop and rap right now. So, a lot of the biggest artists or upcoming artists, you know, get the opportunity to perform at Rolling Loud. So I'm definitely trying to, you know, grind and get to that position. Definitely dope. I also like um, a couple of the little festivals that they be having around different cities and stuff like that. I like to perform at as well. Okay. But well, rolling that, Down Loud, that's that's definitely a good one, man. So I, yeah, definitely. I'm that. All right. So you are a talented songwriter. With that being said, can you talk to us about how you're able to write so many different styles of music? Um, how? I guess I, you know, just thank God for my versatility. But um, growing up, my music is very, I mean, my family's very music oriented. So um, I guess it's just growing up. My mom, you know, I used to be sitting in the back, you know, whenever I'm crying, you know, she used to put on a Destiny's Child, you know, so I'm very, besides the amount of rap I make, I love R&B music. So basically I got an R&B project on the way, but um, definitely I just listen to a whole bunch of music and my mind is always flustered and getting so many ideas at once. Soon as I think of something, I'm writing it down, whether it's just a bar or it's the whole song, I just get to writing. And whatever I don't finish, I definitely come back to it. And my cousin is actually my producer, so he always hooking me up with the vibe. Shout out to him, Jabba. Love you. But yeah, we went crazy. Right. So Talk to us about your own unique genre of music, which you call Starburst, and explain to us how you gave it that name. Yeah, well, back to the uh, my stage name, Sack Star J. And then I was thinking about it because somebody asked me, he was like, bro, like every song I'm listening to is super different. So like, what what kind of genre is this? And I told him, one thing I tell him is I don't like to be confined to one genre. I don't like to be put in a box. So I just called it Starburst because, you know, when you open that pack of candy, it's a bunch of different colors, different flavors in the package. You know, everybody going to have that one that they want to go to and everybody might like all of them. So I got something for everybody. Hey, man, I think I can share this with you because we like family, right? So when it comes to the Starburst, my favorite uh, is the red. 
Yeah, the red go crazy. I like the uh, the little pink ones too. Oh, you want to <laughs> pink? <laughs> the yellow ones, they go crazy too, though, when they want to sometimes. All right. So you are a singer, rapper, and a songwriter, but if you could only do one for the rest of your life, which one would you pick and why? Mm, if for the rest of my life, I would definitely say right. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I may write a song that's like super good, but, you know, I don't have the vocal range to hit them notes. But, you know, I may know somebody in the industry or, you know, somebody's looking for a specific song and I could hop on that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like ghostwriters and writers in general are, you know, very important in this industry right now. They get paid residual income, my brother. Like, <laughs> so that's definitely go the right route for sure. So let me ask you this, and this was again, this wasn't even a question that I had prepared to ask you, but since you you really showing that you're really passionate about songwriting, so would you say that you're just as equally talented at doing all three, or do you feel that you're more talented in one over the other? Like, like do you feel that you're more talented as a songwriter, or do you feel that you're just as talented as singing and just as talented as rapping and just as talented as songwriting? Um. I mean, I would say I'm equally talented in all areas. You know, it's always room for improvement. You know, I'm still early in my career. It's a lot to see. It's a lot to grow on. But I'm definitely, you know, I feel like I'm equally as good at everything I do. Because, you know, one thing about me, I'm going to always do my best at anything I do. So, for sure, I say it's all equal. All right. So the first song that you ever released was titled Captain Crunch. Yeah, Captain Crunch. Is this song really talking about cereal or is it talking about something else? And can you explain what the song is about and why you chose to give it that title? Yeah, for sure. Um, first off, shout out to my boy Cash J. He's a Houston producer right now, going crazy. We're going with some top artists right now. So but shout out to him. Bless bro. You know, we got some stuff on the way as well. But um, yeah, Captain Crunch was my first song. And um how that came about was I heard this one beat on YouTube. It was in a background of somebody else's video. It wasn't even like an actual reference beat, but I like screen recorded it. And I was like, bro, I need you to make something similar to this. And he got cooking. And then I was just, first thing when I heard the beat, I was just like, I was eating some cereal. I was eating Captain Crunch. And I was just like, she says, crunch time. I'm the captain. And I was like, this ain't money and even acting. So like, I was just going off with it. And I'm like, wow. And I said, yo, that's it right there. He's like, so what is it about cereal? I'm like, no, it's like, it's crunch time. Like, when it's time to go, I'm on it. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's basically what that song's about. Being on time at the right time. Okay, so it do have a little something to do with cereal because you was eating Captain Crunch at yeah. the time. Okay, okay. I, I see what you're doing there. Yeah, a little play on words. You a little, know a little play on words. Yeah. yeah that's that song right in you. That's what that is. <laughs> yep. You're going to see a lot of that upcoming real soon, real soon. All right. If you could only use one word to describe your music, what word would you choose and why? Mm, one word. Different. The best way I could put it. And that leaves it open for interpretation. Like, what do you mean by different? Leave that up to you. Like I said, the genre is Starburst. I'm going to leave it at that. I like that word, different. <clears throat> but I got another word, and this is just based off of the conversation that we've had so far. Mm -hmm. If I had to give you one word, I would say versatile. Versatile, definitely, yeah. Yeah, because obviously you, you've been able to express that, you know, you could do a lot of different things. You, you could do a lot of different styles. So I would probably say versatile. Mm -hmm, definitely. If you could open up for any artist, like be an opening act for any artist, who would it be and why? Mm. I would honestly want to open up for like a, an R&B artist or something. Just like set the tone. I feel like just because I can rap or I can go that R&B route is just different. Something to um, bring to a, a new fan base. So I, it'd probably be like a, probably one of the newer artists right now, like a SZA or um, 
some of y'all may not know her, Justine Sky or something like that. Really big fans of them. So if we talk about rappers, I probably open up for like a a little baby or something like that, or Chris Brown. For sure. But you named some good ones. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You went from Scissor, little baby. To... Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, I like you going right to the to the best in breed. That's how you got to do it, man. If you gonna open up for somebody, you might as well, you know, go right to the heavy hitters, yeah, right? Where you want to be, yeah, for sure. All right, so let me ask you this: uh, Would you rather grow slow and organically, or go viral and blow up overnight? Hmm. I mean, if we being honest, I don't really have a preference. You know, I'm just, I'm just loving what I'm doing and doing it at the pace that it takes me. You know, what I'm saying I'm just creating music that I feel like people are gonna love and it's gonna be here for a long time. I don't make stuff just to you know throw out. You know, what I'm saying I like to, I, I like to listen to music. I listen to music every day. So when I drop something, I feel like you know people gonna mess with it too. So hopefully, one of these ones, you know. The time is here. The time is here. And I'm ready for it all the way. But at the same time, I'm in no rush whatsoever. I'm enjoying this little cruise that we got going here. All right. So so this is just a follow-on question to the one that I just asked you. So what would be the craziest thing that you would be willing to do to go viral on social media? <clears throat> the one thing about me, you know, my parents and my sister tell me this all the time. Like, yo, you need to start doing this. You need to build your social media presence and stuff like that. But at the same time, I'm a Scorpio. Like it's cool and chill. Is a lot of people who know me know me. Like I'm really just like a cool, calm and collected person. Like I don't really like to, you know, talk too much. And I like to handle business and, you know, be about my business and be on my way. But um definitely as far as like the craziest thing I'd be willing to do, I mean, I don't know. You gotta catch me at the right time or something. So. Oh, so they got they got to catch you in the act, huh? So you ain't yeah, gotta, yeah, you you don't like being in the spotlight. So it's gonna be hard for you to do something crazy on social media. Yeah, for sure, unless you just you know catch me slipping or something like that. You know, it's gonna be hard for you to see that side. All right. So would you rather be rich or famous, and you can only choose one? Fame, I always say that without a doubt. You know, money gonna come regardless, but you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to leave a legacy and it's more important right now for me. Especially for me growing up, you know, everybody got their little hood stories or whatnot. But for me, I was genuinely blessed to, you know, be around that, you know, from jump. So money don't money not really an issue for me right now. I'm more right. so legacy for sure. All right. Uh so the premise of this show is independent artists learning from other independent artists. So what mistakes, if any, have you made so far in your music career that we can learn from? Mm, one thing I have to tell upcoming independent artists is to definitely do your research and make sure you type it in the right emails. Because <laughs> I'm going to give y'all a story right here. Um, uh, I was on live with um, Capella Gray and I was hitting him up, you know, telling him I was a... Uh, a writer, I'm a writer and stuff like that. I'm an artist, I'm a writer and stuff like that. And he was like, cool, send me something. And I was like, I right, bet, I'm willing to work with you and stuff like that. So I sent them one of my tracks that I just released called Built to Last. And I think I missed like one letter in the email, sent it to a completely different email. You'd be surprised how many scammers out there, you know, making the same email, subtle differences. But yeah, long story short, spent a smooth like 2500 lost it like that so you definitely want to be frugal with your money and be in treat your everything you're doing with fine details hold on man so you telling me that you you did all of that and it and it got <laughs> sent to the wrong person it's um, is that a 2500 man it ain't even getting my dm to me say he ain't never even received it i was like dang come on <laughs> And you, man, I said you got the lab to keep from crying, man. Are you, are you serious? Yeah. yeah, man. Those. So let this be a lesson to everybody out there. Double check. That's all it is, man. Double, Double check. check and triple check. Nay, the more the merrier. Hey, I got you on that. 
Uh, what music projects can we expect to hear from you uh, coming in the near future? In the near future, I'd say in the next couple months or so, um, I have a mixtape dropping called Trackstar. And it's going to be about eight to ten songs and no straight vibes. I think everybody's going to enjoy that. It's definitely going to be a dope experience. Some you, know, you can have on repeat, drive in the car, play straight, no skips for sure. All right. So I, I wasn't prepared to ask you this question because obviously I didn't know what you was going to be wearing. I can't predict the future. But mm-hmm. with that being said, man, if it's not too personal, man, talk to us about the about the chain you wearing, man. It looks like you you got some family members or somebody that you hold near and dear to your heart on your chain. Man. What is it all about? It's my mom's, you know what I'm saying? It's my rock for sure. You know, best friends, lock name, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm definitely heavy on the mama's boy, but you know, that's, you know, I don't need to be sad, but yeah. Hey man, that sounds that sound like the uh, the title of a, of a song coming in the near future, man. Uh, yeah, she's been pushing me to uh, drop a little song for, you know, some Tupac stuff, some Kanye West type mommy vibe. And I'm working on it, dog. You know, I'm trying to, I'm a perfectionist, so whenever it's ready, it's ready. Yeah, you you going you going to do like a a new a new spin on the on the dear mama, make it make it current. But original cuz you know I'm different. I'm, I'm you know any mama song that dropped is iconic, so I'm not about to make one and then ain't about to do no numbers for it, so you know taking my time with that one. But when it's ready, it's going to be ready. Well, since you shared something personal with me, and again, I wasn't even really expecting to even share this with you, but since we, like we like I said, we like family, man, so I can share this with mm-hmm. you. So I actually wrote a song a while back that's uh, a mama song, but the crazy thing about it is I'm not actually talking about my mom. So my wife wanted me to write a song about her. So what I did was, you know, I wrote it in, a, in this perspective of her being a mom to my kids. Mm. So it's still a song about moms or, you know, a mother, but it's, it's not my mom, it's my wife. The mommy anthem in general. If, uh, shout out to all the women out there, you know, everybody yeah. who has a kid or has a kid figure, you know what I'm saying? Some, everybody a mommy to somebody. There you go. So let me ask you this. So uh, is there anything that I should have asked you, but I didn't ask you for whatever reason? Mm, anything that you didn't ask me, but you should have asked me. I mean, I don't know. I feel like you hit it right on the nail, to be honest, you know? Okay. Well, I just figured that's a good recap question. Like, if there's anything, you was like, oh, man, I want to talk about this. Oh, man, I want to talk about this. That's, that's just kind of give the opportunity just to kind of just put it out there. Right, right, right. But let me ask you this. Is there anything that you would like to ask me? Hmm. Okay, how long have you been doing podcasting? And what are your future plans? Like, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, wow, nobody's ever asked me that actually. Uh, so how long I've been doing podcasting? Um, probably a little bit less than six months. Well, well, let me take that back. This particular podcast has been less than six months, but I was actually host on other podcasts. So I've been being a host and being on shows and stuff for a while now. And as far as where I can see this going, you know, in the next five years or so, um, I'm not going to say that I'll ever get as big as like uh, Joe Button or uh, like Drink Champs or Million Dollar Worth of Game or anything like that. To be honest with you, I just actually like the fact that I'm in a position where I can actually help other independent artists because I'm an independent artist myself. So I know how it feels when it feels like you don't really have a lot of outlets a lot right. of these bigger shows aren't going to let, you know, smaller independent artists even come on their shows. So if it's not somebody like me or somebody else is doing something similar to what I'm doing, more likely the smaller independent artists aren't going to really get that opportunity. So I've enjoyed being able to do this and help, you know, smaller independent artists. So, you know, that's what I get out of it. I figure, you know, be a blessing to others and you too will be blessed, right? Right. Hey, you never know. You, you you small right now, but like you said, five years from now, you keep doing what you're doing, keep grinding, and it could be somewhere completely different. So you never imagine. So so like I say for us to keep going. Hey, yeah, hey, I appreciate that. And you know what? You know, it'd be it'd be somebody like you there go back and they'd be like, oh man, 
man, he interviewed him before he blew up and then you blow up and then people going to come all the way back to this particular podcast and listen to the interview and listen to what you was talking about before you blew. They're going to be like, oh, see, he was all humble and stuff back then. Now he done blew up. He out of hell. No, nobody. Mm, right. You know how it is. It's always like that. It's always like that. All right. So before you get out of here, tell the audience where they can find you online. For sure, for sure. You can find me on all my social medias at SACSTARJ, S-A-C-K-S-T-A-R-J. And you can find me on all platforms at cash tag, A-C-K, cash tag, T-A-R-J. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come on the podcast, man. And I'm going to be definitely listening out for your stuff that you're going to be doing in the near future. For sure, for sure. I can't wait to let y'all hear it. All right, man. You take care of yourself. For sure, for sure. You too. All right now. Yeah, ready.